This video is from a workshop I did where I was showing students how to make a brunei or grisai as it's more commonly called. I'm using burnt umber and titanium white and I'm going to add a touch of ultramarine blue to the brown to make a bit more of a black shade for the darkest shadow under the cup. I'm working on a canvas panel with a chalk pastel pencil drawing done on the panel in advance. I'm starting with my darkest value. This is my darkest dark and it starts underneath the cup with an almost black and gets a little bit lighter in that shadow as it moves away from the cup. I'm using acrylic paint here for this underpainting so that it dries quickly and then I'll do a demo using oils on top of it. Acrylic paint dries quickly so I won't be able to make too many soft edges as I'm going along unless I work wet into wet. So instead I use dry brushing. I'm going to provide a link below on how to dry brush. But the biggest idea here is to use my darkest darks in a bigger shape than they need to be so that when I go next to them with the lightest with the lighter value, I can dry brush that lighter value over top of some of that dark so that I get a seamless finish and that soft edge really looks lovely. Shadows typically have hard edges closer to the cup or the item that's casting in the shadow and those edges tend to get softer as they get farther away from the object, in this case the cup. I'm not worrying about any of the wrinkles in the background fabric of this scene that I've set up. I'm just going to paint the entire background a static value. But the one thing I'm going to do is change up the value just a tiny bit. So it's not going to have a lot of wrinkles and it's not going to end right near the top of the cup. But what it will do is it'll be a little tiny bit darker at the bottom of the canvas and get lighter as it gets towards the top. And this is the part outside of the shadow around the cup. And the reason I do this is because typically on a 2D surface to make it feel more 3D, one of the tools we can use is make things that are closer to us darker and things that are farther away a little bit lighter and they get quite light as they go way off into the distance. Since this is a tabletop, I'm just going to have the bottom be a little bit darker than the top and I'm going to start from bottom to top. So I start painting the bottom few inches, working my way upward and adding a little bit more white as I go up. As you're painting, make sure to constantly assess your values so that everything relates to each other. How dark is the cup next to the background? How dark is that cup next to the shadow? And how dark is the cup next to the highlights? And if the rim of the cup is highlighted but still has a gleam of light on it, then we know that that rim of the cup is not pure white because the lightest value on that rim is going to be the highlight. While your values don't have to mimic exactly what's on your resource, whether it's from life or on your photograph, the relationships between each set of values within that scene should be consistent. So if the inside of the cup is lighter than everything else other than the rim and the highlights, that should be the same, even if it's a little darker than what your sample was. As long as all the relationships are consistent, you can skew everything darker or lighter. If you use too much water with acrylic paint as you're working, then what happens is you get a lighter value when, a, when you apply it to a white canvas. So be careful about how much water you use. For line work, like the rim of a cup, I almost always rely on a filbert brush. Its flat bristles with rounded end are perfect for creating a nice line, where a round brush a lot of times is so susceptible to pressure, I can't control the thickness and thinness of it as well as I can with the filbert. To create the highlights on the cup, the little glow around the gleams, what I did is I took white paint, push and wiggle my filbert brush in the white paint, turn it over, push and wiggle it again, and then wiped off the outside edges of the brush. Now I have to make sure this brush is completely dry. It has no water on it. There's no water added to the paint at all. It's just pure paint. Then I can put the brush in the middle of where the gleam will be and flick it upward like a plane taking off the runway. I can keep adding more gleams. I tend to go in a cross with an X overlapping it so that I always start at the center and 
pull that brush away from the center and up off the canvas and then go back in with a nice thick dot of paint in the center. You can also use your finger to do the blurring. Stay tuned for my next demo where I take this painting and apply oil paint over top of it and show you how you can use this as a value guide. Sometimes color can be hard to see value in because the saturation or vibrancy of the color can get in the way and make a color seem lighter or darker than it really is.